Hi, I'm Wyatt Cash at Scoop News Group, and we're here at the Age of Identity Public Sector Forum with Lamont Orange, Chief Information Security Officer at Netscope. Uh, Lamont, thank you so much for joining us. Great to be here, Wyatt. Looking forward to it. Well, let me start by asking, how has the adoption of widespread remote work changed uh, your authentication strategies? Well, I don't think it, it's really changed it any. I think for me and, and many security professionals, identity and auth authentication have been definitely key cornerstones to our security programs. What I think it has emphasized is the focus on access management and what we do around that, given that many organizations, if they were in the middle of going to cloud, they are kind of accelerated to get there at this point. So access and identity have been more of the focus in the marriage of, of uh, the security programs today. Well, how much is zero trust a mentality versus a set of technology goals uh, for you and as you see it? I'd say zero trust is the journey more so it, it's not a destination it's absolutely a journey it's a focus on data and context and that's where we get this philosophy of zero trust there's many frameworks out there there are many technologies that will be applicable to this but when you are are thinking zero trust you're thinking how has my cloud adoption changed how i need to identify those who have access to my data, and then what controls can I put around that access to that data? And next, to what extent do leaders need to get organizational buy-in before deploying zero trust technology? So I think buy-in is always important within a security program. We have to make sure that our security programs are aligned with the business objectives also taking into consideration that we want to make sure that we don't introduce any undue or excess friction to our workforce and, and how they access and use our systems and data so i would say it's more buy-in around the journey for the zero trust uh, strategy that you are putting forward and then you start to implement and report back and and show that you can actually up level your security and, and help the business innovate and not bring the friction against uh, so much undue friction for those that's trying to just do their job. Well, next, talk to us a little, what are your organization's priorities now in terms of establishing identity management procedures? I would say still it goes back to focus around access management. Uh, in, in my case, we're already a highly remote workforce and we, we were there before COVID. So it's looking at and understanding we know what the identities are and have really good strong practices around that. It was now it's more of when you have all these different ecosystems, uh, you want to understand what access down to uh, roles and jobs and functions, some of the panacea that we've always looked for. But I think now we're in a good spot with uh, cloud security solutions as well as the introduction of SASE technologies and tools as part of this journey, that now we can actually implement roles and implement functions and implement context around data access and, and then protect that access that way. Well, walk me through the other effects or benefits, if you will, that might come with a more efficient means of identity management. And you know, what are some of the ripple effects that you anticipate? So one of the ripple effects, I, I think, is that we we um, tend to allow the organizations to work the way that they want to work versus the way that we want them to work. And, then, and what I mean by that is in many cases, I've talked to many of my colleagues, you know, we want to force traffic through VPNs. We want to backhaul traffic so that we can have this particular visibility. I think with this, this um, paradigm shift, that was accelerated by the, the uh, pandemic. Now we're into a situation where, well, we had visibility thoughts and plans um, that may have been 18 months out or so. We accelerated those. That wrapped around the identity, uh, not only of the individuals trying to access the data, but the, the systems that are trying to access the data. And we also are looking, have better uh, telemetry around what they're doing with this data, which allow us to apply policy. 
And when you apply that policy, you're uplifting your security posture in general just by doing that because you went from something that was very wide in an access um, paradigm when you're using VPNs to something that's very narrow and focused on that job function and people delivering that particular service for you, which always less is more at that point, right? <laughs> that's right. Well, Ma, let me close with this last question. What's your answer to this? Will we ever get rid of passwords? I think we will. I, I think we are actually moving down that path. Uh, there's still a lot of, uh, let's say, legacy technologies that are reliant on a password. So there's some retrofitting and innovation that has to occur there. But I think now we're getting toward the innovations and in multiple ways of authenticating and authorizing people. And passwords may tend to go away at some point. And I'd say in, in the near future, the next 12 months or so, no. But if you look at 24, 36 months, I think we will move very closer to a passwordless society. Well, we uh, a lot of us are hoping you're right. And uh, there's a lot of optimism with the technology coming down the pike that we will get there eventually. But uh, Lamont Orange, thank you so much for uh, joining us today and sharing some of your insights on identity management and security. Thank you. I appreciate you all being here.